Chapter 8, Episode 10 Sally was alone in their cabin while Caprice and Billy were off on a hike through the woods. Sally simply wasn't up for moving about. She sat on the balcony and decided to give the fish story another attempt. Brandon and I, on an adventure in the mountains not so far away from the Canadian border, were a bit hungry after running out of eat more bars he had stolen from a gas station in Whitefish. We were camped beside a mountain lake, quite tired from our days of running in the panic through the woods. We knew they were looking for us, but we were pretty sure we had lost them when we had our identi identity chips removed by a friendly vet. At a previous river, I had tried spear fishing with a wooden spear, and it did not work. I wasn't talented enough at making a spear, and spear fishing just wasn't, isn't as easy as it looks in those nature shows. With this lake, I refused to take no for an answer. There was nothing that needed doing. Brandon sat on a rock and whittled with his pocket knife. I set to my mission. There was a little creek leading to the little lake and the water was clear and shallow. Many little trout swam gently against the current going nowhere. I saw Brandon look up and laughing at me pacing around like a hungry monkey so rather than get fuddled with him I took a walk around the lake to look for inspiration for a solution to my task of catching fish. And I got it. On the opposite side I found binding wire likely left by loggers years before. A net. I would build a net. With some bending back and forth I managed to break off a piece of wire and return to camp. I then took Brandon's knife and cut a branch off a tree. Around the branch I twisted one end of the wire. Through the wire I fitted a piece of plastic from a discarded bag. Well, it was done. A few holes for water to get through. Then I cut another branch off a tree and scared some fish up the creek. Some darted out to the little lake, but enough went up the shallow creek. It was too shallow to go far and they were compelled to return. When they did, my net was in the creek. Don't tell the forest ranger. Brandon had become an eager participant of cleaning fish and making a fire, so I left him to it to get a few more little fishies. They were quite small. Except for one. Now fish, one would think, are not creatures of thought. And bas basically, I think this to be true. There is instinct, and instinct is very old and also somehow forever young. All the other fishies went away when the above world creature came at them with a stick. This one fish did not. Mr. Fish refused to push, be pushed from the riverbank by any protru protruding beast. Had I been thinking at the time, I may have left Mr. Fish, maybe Mrs., and ate his friends. But I wasn't thinking, I was hunting. And anyone who has had an empty stomach in the wilderness will know it is a different mindset. Only the fish mattered to me as long as I thought he was to be eaten. I pushed at the fish until he was starting to get pissed until I was starting to get pissed off at it for not cooperating with my wishes. It kept dodging my stick but would not leave the spot where it was determined to stay. Then the moment came when it was just about coming into my mind to reevaluate and take another course. Just go eat, perhaps. That fuck it moment. And just at that fuck it moment, I felt the weight of the fish on the end of, the, end of my stick. Remember, this is a fresh stick, so it has good whip to it. Have you ever whipped apples? You need a fresh cut stick a good two or three meters long. And let's say two. You sharpen the thin end so you can easily stick an apple on it. Then you whip the stick from behind your back with both hands, flinging the stick to a parallel straight in front of you and apple flies for days. You get it? Not quite. I broke a window, not on purpose, once. Uh, the fish was like the apple only not stuck on, just inadvertently sitting on top. Without thinking, I flung him out of the water on the end of my stick. I watched him fly almost like an apple up into the sky and land on the grass. Now I'm pretty sure almost no one on the planet has done that. I was, it was a most real event. 
I smacked the fish in the back of the head and then chopped off the head and tail and pulled out its guts. Then we talked about it, Brandon and I, the real fish, that special belligerent fish. And I felt a little bit bad about eating that fish, well, killing it, only a little on account it was yummy. I have since never forgotten that fish. Sometimes, when I wonder if I should take up the risk to do something not according to the accepted norm, I often think of that fish and just do it.